All right, this is the first mini episode, Import Shorts. Remember the import report? Well, it's back now and it's short. To make this logo, I used Distort, and here are my Famicom games. What a great assort. The game I'm going to be taking a look at today is Parodius, and oh boy, this is not a good version of it. But first, what the hell is Parodius? Well, it's a shmup. Parodius is a parody of Gradius. It started on the MSX and isn't just a take on Gradius. No, this series celebrates many Konami franchises and also Japan. This series is famous for being distinctly, well, Japanese. A lot of over-the-top visuals, chaotic levels, and crude humor. It's a great first game for people who want to get into imports. Parody shooters slash em ups are not just limited to Konami. I have this awesome Super CD game called Star Parodier. Name one other game where you play as the console. Two years later, Parodius soon branched out to the arcades with the new title, Parodius Da, also known as Parodius From Myth to Laughter. This smash hit made it to several different platforms, most notably the SNES and PC Engine. The original arcade release was also bundled with the sequel, Fantastic Journey, and released on Saturn and PS1. The PS1 is the ultimate Parodius machine. You can play the MSX original on Konami's MSX collection. No, I don't have the PS1 volumes. Yes, I wanted to find a way to show off this Saturn gem. Chatting Parodius and Sexy Parodius also got their own standalone games, and Para Wars. You can't forget Para Wars, the Parodius strategy RPG. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you don't want to play an RPG that isn't in English, so the Saturn is also the ultimate Parodius machine. What isn't a Parodius machine is my toaster oven, but also the Famicom. It only got a port of Da, and that's what we'll be taking a look at today. Well, it's not the worst version of the game. It certainly is odd. See, this game also came to Europe, but so what? Still an import. I'd love to revisit the Parodia series for its own full video one day, but for now, here's just a highlight of this port. Without further ado, it's time to play Parodius. Okay, let's start with a comparison. Here's the Arcade and Sharp X68000 versions. Then we have the Super Famicom and PC Engine. And finally, here's the NES. This game is absolutely insane. Wooden cat ship, space clowns, syringes. It's hard to believe that this game was designed by humans. There are four playable characters. Vic Viper from Gradius, Taco, the mascot of Parodius, Twin Bee and Pentaru, son of Penta from those Penguin Adventure games on the MSX. I quite appreciate this little guy's inclusion. He was sort of a mascot for Konami at the time and I'm a fan of his series. Pretty much every character is fun to play. Of course, Vic Vipe and Twin Bee have both of their power-ups taken from their respective games, but Taco's moves are from Salamander, and Pentaru is based on Gradius 2. But as far as everything else goes, yeah, it's Gradius. Same mechanics and everything. One criticism I have for Gradius in general, I guess, is when you die, you lose all of your power-ups. And that's pretty brutal. They did add the bells from Twinbee. That's kind of cool. The music for the game is remixed classical pieces. It's fun to hear these recognizable tunes in this game and see what you can name. Now, Gradius worked rather well on the NES, but this game... It is super slow. This port feels like everything is underwater. Whatever character you choose moves about two powers down from the original game speed. And it gets worse. There's slowdown when there are a bunch of things going on, which is most of the game. The thing that makes this not just funny Gradius is the sheer amount of things happening, and the old Famicom just can't handle it. And while that's pretty much the intended effect for you, Playing this game has your brain unable to process what is happening, turning it into a liquid? At least the computer should be able to catch up. I mean, look at the flicker. Oh god, the flicker. Seizure Fest 1990 over here. There also just isn't enough visual distinction. This game is a color overload, but the NES's limited palette leaves things being not discernible enough and the game looking like a cluttered mush. This also means that you're often blindsided by bullets you couldn't see. So, we have bad graphics, Slow down, and artificial difficulty. Parodius on the Famicom is not good, but man, is it interesting. They try to squeeze this super intense game onto 8-bit hardware, and while it isn't great, you can't say they didn't try. Aside from some stages being cut, this is Parodius, and it's rather impressive. Parodius Da is an awesome arcade title, and a lot of that fun is still sorta almost intact. I find a lot of enjoyment looking at strange ports and just overall impressive titles that may or may not be good. It can just be fun looking at things in retrospect and appreciating the art of game development. So, if you want to pick up an interesting title for your Famicom collection, or are a shmup fan looking for a not great game to sink your teeth into, Famicom Proteus is the game for you. And I come back to it quite often despite what you would think. And hey, at least it's not the PAL version. 
Why? Well, it's the same game, but at 50 hertz instead of 60. And that has to be fantastic, all right. So that was the first import short. It was short. I hope that changing the formula up a bit and producing more content in between my big videos can be beneficial for both you and me. I'm excited to talk about some oddball Japanese or PAL games that I couldn't possibly be able to make 30 minute videos on. I have a ton of ideas I just can't wait to put in motion. Well, that's it for now. See ya.